so a number of you will have come from industries who'd be interested in becoming platforms or converting an existing product or service to platform. Uh, we have the pleasure of introducing today someone who's actually been uh, with a company for quite some time who will be a wonderful position to be able to tell you about shifting some of the mental models of folks who have been selling products and electronics for quite some time. And indeed, how is it that you effect the transition from product to platform? Um, we have with us, uh, fortunately, the Executive Vice President and Global CIO of Snyder Electric. They've been around for quite some time. He's been with the firm since 1993. And they didn't initially think of themselves as a platform, but they are in the midst of a transition to exactly that business model, trying to understand what uh, should happen. Um, so Hervé Correa is um, the Executive Vice President. He's been there uh, previously as the CFO of uh, Schneider's Critical Power and Services based on an acquisition of another company, APC, uh, where he also, also oversaw legal IT and strategy, quite an important set of elements, the technology and the strategy uh, particularly. Before that, he was uh, Vice President of Finance and Control and Business Development in the Asia Pacific uh, region. He um, was also a uh, corporate officer for mergers and acquisitions, so he can also examine the questions of ecosystem partners. But he can actually tell us a great deal about what it is to transition from product to platform. With that, please welcome Hervé Correa. Thank you. I'll try. So hi, everybody. So I'm the last speaker right in the conference. So as a consequence, you'll have to put up with a healthy dose of French accent right before the weekend. So I'll try to be brief, concise, to the point. Uh, um, I'll start by briefly introducing Schneider Electric. Uh, uh, not all of you might know us. It's a pretty large company. It's about 25 billion euro of uh, revenue. It's 150,000 uh, uh, employees. And we like to describe ourselves as uh, the global specialist in energy management and automation. And there's a, we have a purpose that we love, and our purpose is to ensure that life is on, everywhere, for everyone, and at every moment. So what does that mean? It's essentially three things. First, to life is on, you need to be energized. I mean, you need basically electricity, and, and, and we know that we'll have to face skyrocketing uh, uh, needs in electricity over the next years. It's not only about being energized, it's about being efficient. Efficient in how we consume and use energy. Efficient about how we run uh, uh, processes on top of it. But efficiency is also enabled by connectivity. Um, you know, it's not only about moving electrons, it's also about moving bits. And, and connectivity actually is a big enabler of, of efficiency. For those, those are really the three pillars um, that, that we do look at in order to achieve uh, our purpose, our mission. We see ourselves really as a, as a technology provider, and, and I won't bore you with all the technology trends uh, uh, that we've been uh, uh, speaking about or alluding to during most of the day, but mobility is, is a big deal. I'll speak some more uh, about it. Cloud, obviously, uh, pervasive sensing, analytics, machine learning, deep learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and obviously end-to-end -end security. So without going through each of those trends, I'll just try to tell you how they are combined in uh, 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 our digital journey, our digital strategy. Um, and I would like to describe it pretty commonly through a flywheel, uh, a three-step flywheel. The first step being our obsession, which is really connecting our products. It's building, enhancing our core products with connectivity on analytics on top of our products, making our products, our systems smart. First step. The next step in the flywheel is about building new offers, new business models. So it is not only about you know, enabling intelligence on top of every individual product, but how you create new offers, new business models, and I'll come, of course, back on platforms there, but on top of those products. It's how you think about outcomes, how you think about system optimization. That second part of the flywheel leads us to transforming customer engagement. I mean, you don't bring just products, you do bring domain expertise to counsel, to advise your customer on very specific area that can be mission critical, very relevant to them. And that new customer 
engagement helps you to drive more community, and so goes the flywheel. Um, so we're starting with, co with connectivity, right? And, and we think a lot about uh, connectivity, and we've tried to put together what we refer to uh, uh, internally as the four levels of, of uh, connectivity. I mean, there's a basic, you know, not so interesting level of just registering your asset, etc. Then on top of it, you know, you can get into added value in the form of asset lifecycle management, so consulting, audits, uh, 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 service, and maintenance. Then it gets interesting when you move to new services that get into managing not only the life cycle, but also the performance of your assets. You know, predictive maintenance, uh, asset health, uh, asset risk analysis, uh, um, condition-based maintenance, and so forth. And then the fourth step, if you look at it really at a system level, is looking at outcomes. How do you uh, 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 look at the TCO of an entire system? How do you optimize uh, a, a system? How do you uh, um, get into energy management optimization services? Looking at demand optimization, you know, working on power quality, things that are possible when you connect a lot of things together and you optimize a system. So that's kind of the four steps of connectivity that, that, we, like to, uh, um, that we like to look at. And the platform the, 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 that we use, the name that we use internally for our platform is, is EcoStructure. This is basically the unifying, uh, um, if you will, experience, the common thread uh, uh, um, that deals with connectivity in all the various businesses, lines of business, uh, and services of Schneider Electric. It's one technology stack, it's a number of, of reference architecture, and it's a set of core technology that we apply to a lot of different segment expertise. And this is really what, what the platform that helps us get to the lowest level, from the lowest level to the highest level of uh, uh, connectivity value. If I have to, to describe EcoStructure, and we've kind of alluded to it earlier in the conference, I mean, we like to describe it in, in three layers. The basic layer is connected products, because you know, the breaking news is that for Internet of Things, you need things. And customers still want good things, you know, good breakers, good sensors, good actuators, and so forth, uh, 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 that are connected. That's the basic layer. Then, and we, we alluded to it earlier, you need, for many, many cases, a real-time control loop. And that real-time control loop happens on the edge, it's where you know you can't have a network dependency, uh, 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 you can't have uh, latency. So that's there's a very important layer of edge control in our architecture, in our platform architecture. And then, third layer, you get of course to the cloud, and then you can get to all the bounty of the cloud in terms of heavy compute, you know, training, machine learning models, deep learning models, offering apps, analytics, and optimization services. But we always look at our Internet of Things uh, uh, architecture at our platform based on those three levels. And on top of it, you, saw, you see four boxes, which are basically the end markets that we're addressing. So buildings, data center, industry, and, and infrastructure. But this is really... Uh, um, our platform, our, our architecture uh, um, at a glance. What I'd like to do now is just probably walk you through three lessons, three belief, uh, uh, three key ideas that we have when it comes to uh, uh, in Internet of Things and platforms and how we applied it within, within Schneider. The first topic uh, um, is that we see many IT players, you know, taking connected products directly to the cloud. There's a lot of operational technology players taking connected uh, 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 products and connecting them to a control layer. We believe that the three layers that I was mentioning to earlier are, are super important. The, the analogy I like to make you know, is that if you have a very modern car, you want to enjoy all the benefits of the cloud, GPS, location, autopilot, uh, 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 remote diagnosis, whatever. But the day you apply the brakes, 
You know, you don't want that instruction to do a round trip through the cloud, have latency, being uh, dependent on, on uh, network outage and so forth. I mean, you want a real time uh, a local control loop. So, so we don't oppose, uh, um, we actually believe in convergence of OT and IT. We don't oppose edge and cloud and we think the two are gonna work more and more uh, um, together actually on, on having those three levels and having them coordinated and converge is a very important element in the industrial uh, uh, world of IoT. The second belief that we have is closing the loop. I mean, you can you know, have tons of IoT devices and they're gonna generate uh, zillions of signals. That's fine, but then what are you gonna do with those signals? I mean, imagine you, know, you have a wonderful predictive maintenance algorithm that are gonna give you a maintenance signal on one asset that you have on the field. What are you going to do with that signal, with that event? I mean, you need to trigger that event, and you certainly need to trigger a, a, a service event. So you need to channel it to the right field service engineer, either your service engineer or a, partner's, a, a partner field service engineer. Now, that's even better if that field service engineer has the right spare part. And that's even better if he has been trained to perform whatever uh, uh, maintenance operation he has to carry it out on that particular uh, uh, machine. So, so we believe that integrating uh, um, the Internet of Things, event management, uh, uh, analytics, uh, uh, and your backend system is super important because it's not only about insight at the end of the day, it's also about actions. And in order to trigger actions and to close the loop, you need to really think about uh, uh, your, your, your platform and your Internet of Things uh, um, architecture from an end-to-end -end perspective. That's what we call closing the loop, and that's the second strong belief that we have. And the third belief that we have is where are you closing the loop? Uh, it was very interestingly mentioned in the previous panel. I mean, you traditionally have those big control rooms with multiple screens, etc. We think that tomorrow you're going to close the loop much more in the field. I mean, mobility is one of the big technology trends uh, that we all uh, learned about, right? So that's where we think that uh, uh, AR, uh, um, you know, augmented reality, mixed reality is gonna be super important because actually you want to close the loop on the field with, you want to, to empower the operators that are as close as possible uh, uh, to, your, to your process. To some extent, I mean, the Internet of Things allows you to it just tons of data, you know, physical data into the digital world. And, and, and augmented reality allows you to take those data back and, 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 and project them around you. So it's an interesting way of closing the loop. And we're very, very uh, uh, um, strong proponent on closing the loop on the field. So those are uh, um, three of our very strong beliefs. We've, we've learned, of course, beyond that, quite a few things on the way. I just picked you know, five of, of the learnings that, that, uh, that we had. The first one, which of course is, is a, a continuous uh, um, work, is you know, balancing your, your shared component, uh, uh, the real platform technology component with domain-specific expertise. And that's of course something that we continuously uh, are fine-tuning. The second thing is that, you know, in Internet of Things, you can do wonderful proof of concepts, but that's relatively easy. The problem is scale. Um, the problem is industrial scale in data collection, aggregation, and so forth. So, so learning to build at scale has been a very big uh, 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 lesson for us. Third thing, and you know, I'll be speaking about machine learning and so forth, but it's the importance of your data models, the information architecture. And we believe it is super important to have an information architecture, actually, that's holistic, that's end-to-end, -end, from designing to building to operating to maintaining uh, 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 your, your, your assets, your system, your process. And, and information architecture is really the building brick of, of, of good, uh, uh, good machine learning, uh, uh, good analytics, good optimization. Um, the fourth point is quite dear to my heart, is a point that I think an under, 
uh, estimated aspect of IoT uh, uh, or platform in general is the, um, the aspect of identity. This was briefly mentioned uh, this morning. So you have identity, of course, of your customer, right? But in an industrial context, you also have the identity of your assets. And you also have the ontology, the relationships between your assets and your customers. And, and that's certainly something that you need to pay a lot of attention to. And then it's security was mentioning uh, uh, several times, and what was mentioned also uh, uh, several times is the need to look at security from an end-to-end -end perspective. So not cloud and product and edge, but really as, as a continuum, and look at it also with, a, with an ecosystem of partners. Which leads me to another very important feature is that you know in, in, in our uh, uh, um, evolution towards platform, uh, uh, on our journey, this is certainly not a journey that we try to do alone. Uh, uh, we love technology, but we love partnership, even ecosystem, even more. So uh, um, the, you can see here a few of uh, the important partners that have helped us along the way. But we really think about it from the perspective of an ecosystem, technology partners, system integrator, and more and more developers, and I'll, I'll mention that. Uh, later, but partnership is absolutely a key feature of what we're trying to do. Um, if we shift uh, uh, um, the needle a second, and we look at this from the perspective of our customer, and I kind of alluded to it, so I will go uh, pretty quickly on this one, but there's four you know, type of value from a customer standpoint than, than an internet of thing platform uh, uh, can provide. Uh, uh, to industrial clients. I mean, the energy efficiency, sustainability, sustainability reporting, um, better asset availability and better asset performance. Then moving to outcome, the output of your operation, and then mobile insights on enabling, empowering uh, uh, the field operators to mitigate risk, uh, uh, prevent risk, before it occurs. So those are really four of the key customer values that we're trying to, to, to drive. If you remember the, um, eco the, the eco structure simplified architecture diagram that I was showing you uh, um, a few slides ago, there were four end markets that I'm just uh, reminding here. So data center buildings, industry, and infrastructure. And we have some very interesting customer stories, actually, on each of those four end markets. One customer story that we particularly like in buildings is uh, um, a, a beautiful building called The Edge, uh, built by our friends from Deloitte in the Netherlands, which is a net zero energy building. We have very interesting case study in data centers with Genpact uh, uh, on how they reduce uh, the time to uh, the their data center maintenance time. We have uh, uh, some very interesting case study also in industry uh, about savings from big oil and gas customer on the output of our process. On same thing on infrastructure on the grid. So, so really very interesting the value you can bring, you know, when you, again, you don't only move electrons, but you, you move bits of information and you leverage uh, the power of, of connectivity. And I will just end with four, you know, the four areas that we are looking at uh, right now. I mentioned most of them already. I mean, significant efforts on our information architecture, on our information architecture end-to-end, -end, so from the CAPEX phase to the OPEX phase. Um, really linked to customer journey on asset li life cycle, so, so data models, ontologies, etc. Because it's a key enabling brick to deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, um, obviously. So those two go very much hand in hand. The third aspect is really platform, probably in the true sense, uh, as we were speaking to, uh, about definitions earlier this morning, so how you extend the ecosystems, right? It's, it's partners, it's developers, the App Store, Marketplace, SDK, API, on, on how you really leverage an ecosystem of people that are going to uh, um, benefit uh, from, what you've, from the platform you've built. 
on the last element is really, again, having this very smooth way of closing the loop on the field, empowering operators, and we feel that there's really a very interesting uh, play with mixed reality and augmented reality, and this is something we're working with, uh, with some of our partners. So that's it, just wanted to give you a brief, I promise to be uh, to the point and concise, but um, a brief overview of what we're doing. Life is on, and uh, I'm happy to take questions if you have any. I have a question for you. Um, it, it, I have enough experience with Schneider that you guys have done very interesting work and built a very important global co core competency in network operating systems. Mm -hmm. in, 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 I'm serious, sorry, network operating centers, NOx. I would just like to get a sense of over the next three to five years, do you think NOx are going to become less important or more important, because I can see this connected ecosystem and machine learning being distributed as opposed to centralized. And if I'm one of your clients, I would imagine this is a conversation I'm having with you as well, because I have to staff these network operating centers. So how's that conversation going? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. And I think you, you've actually said the main world here, which is more distributed. I think that, that we are probably not thinking of any more of a super global approach, you know, one kind of size fits all uh, 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 network operating center, but a much more distributed network uh, uh, of, you know, service bureaus, operating center, et cetera, to, to, to be closer to customers, time zones, and so forth, definitely. Thank you, Thank you so much.